This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. This is our 15th example, solving basic equations with fractions. By basic, I mean we just have a single term on both sides. And this is the last of these type. We're going to go on to where we might have two terms on one of the sides of the equation. All right, so how do we do this? There's a couple ways to do it. To me, the most natural way is to say, well, this is x divided by 3. So to sort of undo that, we can multiply by 3, so the 3's cancel. So that is one way to do this problem, to solve for x, since I only have x on one side. And that gives me x on this side. And what happens over here? Does anything cancel? Well, I could think of this as 3 over 1, and let's see, the 3 and the 9, you can divide each by 3, so that's 1 and that's 3. So I get x equals negative 4 thirds. Make sure you realize you've got a negative times a positive, negative 4 thirds. Okay, so that's the first method. Second method. You could think of this as, when you have x divided by 3, you could think of this as 1x over 3 and rewrite this as 1 third x. Instead of writing x over 3, that's the same thing as writing 1 third x equals negative 4 ninths. And then you can multiply both sides by 3, and everything's going to look the same after that. You're still going to cancel your 3s etc. and your next step will look exactly like that after you cancel everything. So that's a second way of doing it. Let's do a third way. x over 3 equals negative 4 ninths. So the other method we've been doing in a lot of these is if we want to clear the fractions we want to multiply both sides by the least common denominator and in this problem there are two different denominators. So I have to think, what's the least common denominator between 3 and 9? And it's actually 9, since 3 goes right into 9. So we're going to multiply both sides by 9. So what this does is give you an equation without any fractions. All right, so what can I cancel over here? I'm going to be able to cancel the 3 and the 9. That'll give me 3x. And on the right side, the 9's cancel, and I have negative 4. So when I multiply by that least common denominator, I get an equation without fractions. Okay, That's the advantage of multiplying both sides by the least common denominator. But it takes it's going to take two steps to get the answer as opposed to one step, which is how it was the first way I showed you. So now we could just divide by the coefficient of x, and we have x equals negative 4 thirds, which I think we got that doing it the other way. Do we get negative 4 thirds the other way? Yep, there it is. So remember the first way I did it? I just multiplied by the 3. I thought it was x divided by 3, and I multiplied by the 3, and I isolated x in one step. Okay, got negative 4 thirds. In this method, uh, this third way I showed you, I multiply by the least common denominator, which was 9, or 9 over 1, to get an equation without fractions first. And then I divide it by the coefficient of x. Okay, so both of you get you in the same place. x equals, there we go. That was the second way. Both, of, both ways you end up with x equals negative 4 thirds. So let's check it. So as it turns out, checking is actually harder than just doing the problem <laughs> for most people. So we're going to plug in negative 4 thirds for x. So I have negative 4 thirds over 3. Now we have to simplify this. All right, so what does this mean, negative 4 thirds over 3? It means negative 4 thirds divided by 3 which means negative 4 thirds times 1 third. Remember, when you divide by a number, you have to write it times reciprocal. 
And now if we multiply across, I get negative 4 ninths. So the left hand side is negative 4 ninths. The right hand side is negative 4 ninths. And so it checks. So this arithmetic here, doing negative 4 thirds divided by 3, give people more problems than actually just solving the equation over. But it is good practice with fractions and arithmetic. As it turns out, this, um, the second way I showed you how to solve this problem, multiplying by the least common denominator, is easier when you have um, a couple terms on both sides of the equation, or at least on one of the sides. And those are the kind of problems we're going to be doing now. So that's why I've been showing you how to do that, just in preparation for how you might do some more complicated, less basic problems. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.